how does what does it mean that uh, devotees or businessmen or mm -hmm. before they were not on Ruchi because they were they were you know so how to see this in a pure devotional way? Very good question. So there's um there's, uh, oh, sorry. So there's a story about a king who was running his kingdom. And it, it was, um, he felt it to be a burden actually. And the king had, had a guru. So when his guru came to visit him, the king told his, his guru about his concern that I have to run all this kingdom, but I just want to surrender and serve you, Guru Dev. <laughs> So the spiritual master meditated on what his disciple told him. And he told his disciple a close solution. He said, what I will do is I will take your kingdom and you can just serve me. So the disciple was very happy and he told the, he told the guru, he said, this kingdom is yours, take it, I, how can I just serve you? And the spiritual master told his disciples, he said, fantastic, I said, it's now I have this kingdom, what I want you to do as a service to me is to go and sit on my throne and run my kingdom on my behalf. <laughs> We sometimes consider that we're going to offer something to Krishna. We're going to give something to Krishna. But the, the, real, the reality is that it's, it's always been His anyway. Everything belongs to Him anyway. So when we talk about, um, you know, people having something, it's not exactly like that. To have something means you are fully in control of it. No one's in control of anything materially. It will come and by Krishna's arrangement it will definitely go whether they, whether they want it to go or not. So this ruchi relates to a state of consciousness. So we should be like that king. Whatever is allotted to us, we engage it in Krishna's service because it's His actually. And we have that understanding. Um, I remember hearing this saying once, that detachment is not when you own nothing, it's that when nothing owns you. So we see even in the, in the Shastra, many of these great kings, they were Rajrishis. So they were leaders, political, you know, like um, kingly leaders, but they were also great sages or saints. Yeah. My wife was telling me, like, um, she was reading something about how many of the kings, they, they, they learned mantras. Mantras? Yeah. That's why they could recall certain weapons just by sound. And you would also see in the Bhagavatam that many of them, they would retire to the forest and prepare to go back home, back to Godhead. 
si ritiravano nelle foreste per cominciare la loro vita, diciamo, yeah. per the, tornare a casa. At the correct time. Al, al, al momento giusto. Which indicates that they weren't actually attached. Che indica in realtà che loro non erano attaccati al potere. I remember um, a class that His Holiness Chandra Mooli Maharaj gave, I think it was earlier this year. And he was making a point about householder life. And he made the point that the reason why the householder should feed others l'affermazione che un padrone di casa dovrebbe in realtà anche nutrire gli altri, dare il cibo agli altri. Is to help to cultivate the mentality of detachment and recognizing that everything belongs to Krishna. E questo per praticare eh, l'atteggiamento la, del distacco e per, e per abituarsi all'idea che tutto è di Krishna. For me this is one of the beautiful themes of spiritual life. Per me questo è uno dei temi più belli della vita spirituale. Because if you see we Because Krishna is so kind, he's giving us a teaching where we can learn the reality before the reality is forced upon us. Could you imagine someone at the time of death who's not cultivated the right consciousness because they remained attached to everything, now at the time of death That's what they're going to think about and they're not going to be able to move forward properly. And it was all because these aspects of the teachings which we were meant to do, which would have helped us to let that go already and to change that consciousness, we neglected. Tutto, tutto questo perché tutti gli insegnamenti ricevuti che avrebbero potuto fargli cambiare coscienza, lui li ha trascurati e, e quindi ora si ritrova impreparato. So Krishna consciousness is like that, it's die before dying. Quindi la coscienza di Krishna è proprio vuol dire questo, morire prima di morire. With Krishna and his devotees are so compassionate, they point out to us the realities that, the, that most people don't even want to face. And they prepare us for that reality by saying, look, everyone has to leave this world. You don't want to leave the world with an attachment to the world because then you have to come again here. So it's very practical. You have your deities in your house, you recognize that the house belongs to them, and then you offer things in their service. And in doing that, you develop that consciousness that Krishna is in the center, that reality. The house doesn't change, but the consciousness does. La casa non cambia, ma è la coscienza che cambia. So externally it looks the same, but because there's a different consciousness, one can go back to the spiritual world. It's so beautiful and at the same time it's so subtle. Can I answer your question? Thank you. Like Prima lui ha detto che noi magari non conosciamo le nostre debolezze, ma Maya riconosce le nostre debolezze. You said before that Ma we uh, may not know about our weakness, but Maya definitely knows about Yes, yes. Adesso quando noi sappiamo che Maya non è un'entità, non è una cosa vivente, è una cosa insensiente, morta. Come fa a conoscere le nostre debolezze? Okay, uh, we know that Maya is just, is, is just an, uh, has no uh, life in itself, it's, it's energy, so how, how can he know about our weakness if he is not a person? Yeah. 
is not a living being, so how can he know? Ma Chung Sa. It's a, yeah, she's a living being. She is a living being. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's a very bad guy. Um, <laughs> the proper says so, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So is it like the Paramatma that they know everything about us? Um Paramatma is Krishna. Paramatma is a form of the Lord. But Maya is his servant, and, and she's empowered for the service that she has to do. So therefore, Maya is aware. And she, as Maharaj said, she's a real person. Yeah. In fact, is it, I think, is it Brahma Samhita, where it talks about Maya, she, she's um, afraid, she stands in, the, in Krishna's shadow, or is it from Brahma Samhita? There's a statement about how... Do you want me to pass the microphone to Maharaj? I think he wants... Can you pass the microphone? Shadow, yeah. She's a shadow of the reality, but still, because she's a shadow, she acts, she also has the power to create, yeah. maintain, and destroy. Tristi, Sisti, Kalaya. Yeah. All these three things. Yeah. So, why is mentioned when Kamsa tried to kill that uh, girl? Yes. Who he thought was uh, when David. He, Apparently, when the switch was made, the girl was given to uh, David again. Yes. He took that girl and threw it. But that girl was actually Krishna's sister, yeah. who was the purification of the internal energy. Yeah. But for the materialist, she is, uh, she's death, or she's illusion. Mm -hmm. for, the, for the spiritualist, she brings you closer to Krishna, yeah. the same person. Yeah. Yoga Maya or Maha Maya. Yeah. Is the same person. And she has names like Durga, Durga. Chandi, yeah. you know, Bhav. Yeah. So many names. Uh, Ambika, unlimited names. She has yeah. names. Oh, she's real. She's <laughs> real. <laughs> she's not. But she's our friend. Prabhupada says Maya is our friend. But because there's demons in the world, she has to serve them. Yeah. Therefore, there's so many difficulties yeah. because of the demons. But we have no fear of Maya. She's always working to help the devotee become more Krishna. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for your question. And thank you, Maharaj, for the answer. <laughs> Any, um, any last question before we go to breakfast? Okay. Okay. okay, thank you very much for the list. I think you have to do it like... It's up to the organizers. I'm fine if, if, they, if you have time. Guardare per, dentro noi stessi per guardare gli altri. 
So if we talked about um, the holes in which Maya can enter, yes. and she's saying that uh, sometimes we are very judgmental towards ourselves and other peoples, and this can uh, can prevent us from uh, seeing these holes. And, and so she she's she would like to know how to uh, uh, to develop the right um, uh, attitude towards this. Uh, this holes in which my mental gaps. Sure. gaps. So, so how to develop this? So, as devotees, we are meant to be discriminating. But that discrimination is just like the discrimination of a doctor. The, the discrimination of a doctor. When the doctor is making an evaluation, it's to save the person's life and to restore their health. So the evaluation is motivated by compassion. Actually, the more compassionate that someone is, the more clearly they can see things. Yeah. So therefore, when we look at those gaps, we're looking at it, understanding that by the, by, the, by the mercy of Krishna and his teachings, we're able to see more clearly what we need to work on. And to deal with that in a positive way. The alternative is ignorance. The alternative is to ignore something that exists already. And then when something negative happens, then we may turn to Krishna and say, why didn't Krishna help me? But Krishna does help us. It's just a question of whether we really take a, pay attention to the help that he's trying to give. Krishna says, Tesham satata yuktanam bhajitam priti purvakam dadami buddhi yogam tam yenam amupayanti te. He says that as you give me, as all surrender unto me, or as you um, yeah, engage in devotional service, I give you the knowledge by which you can come to me. So the teachings of Krishna consciousness are, are, in, are a manifestation of Krishna's mercy. But as we spoke about yesterday, it should be both the activity and the right mood. Please. Wow. Only Krishna. But 
Christian uses others to do good for you and that. Shut the Thank you very much, Marge. You've actually, I think it's important. Yeah. Because yeah. we do give credit to the person also. We thank them and we develop a the relationship. But we should know behind the scenes as Christians. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And actually, that's reminded me that. So when we had the session yesterday, there was something I wanted to ask the devotees to do as homework. <laughs> and I, but we didn't have time, but I was thinking about it. But I'll just share this with you because it's related to this particular point. We often don't take full advantage of the association of devotees and how Krishna can help us through those devotees. Krishna speaks through his devotees, as Maharaj so beautifully made that point. So what I would request all of you to do as, as at some point today, if you're here with devotees that know you, okay, you can do this here. If you're not here with devotees that know you, then you can, even if you here, are here, you can message also someone who knows you who's not here. But I'd like you to all reach out to at least one devotee today. And you have to do a little bit of explaining. Explain to them why you're asking this and what you're going to do with the information. So what, you want, what you, we want you to do is, someone that you know, the homework is you can ask them for some feedback on how you can improve. Okay? So some, you're going to ask someone that you know, some devotee that you know today, for feedback on how you can improve. And it's important when you ask, so when you ask, you have to explain why. The difficulty is when we ask devotees, if they think that we're not serious, or that we'll be offended if they tell us the truth, <laughs> then they won't say anything, or they'll say, everything's fine, but they won't mean it. Okay, so we have to explain. This is, I'm asking for feedback on how I can improve. I'm asking because I sincerely want to know. Right? And whatever you share with me, I, will not, I, won't, take it, I won't take offense. <laughs> right? I'm just going to... Now, obviously, let's, let's make it even more real. Sometimes people are a bit afraid to ask these questions. Okay. So you can say, look, please tell me nicely, or say it in a, po in a positive way, however, however you need to say it, so you can receive the message. And you can also give them time to think about it, because they may want to go away and think, you know, maybe they know immediately, but they think, how can I say this to this person in a way that they won't take offense? Okay. And that's fine, okay? But today, we would request, I'm not here to tell you what to do, we would request that you go to at least one devotee who knows you, whether they're here or not. If they're not here, then you message them or contact them in whatever way. But you ask them, this is why I'm asking, this is why I'd like to know, you've known me for some time, where do you feel there's an opportunity for me to improve in my Krishna consciousness? Yeah? It could be anyone, as long as they know you. Someone who knows you. Because then they can give you some honest, some honest feedback on, okay, I think there's an opportunity here. Oh, do you want to give the microphone to Marge? <laughs> yeah. 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 That's, that's a good cause. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that could get very. That could get messy. <laughs> yeah, we don't. We don't want any breakups today. Okay. Let's keep it. Let's keep it in the family. Yes, yeah, so, uh, thank you, thank you, Marjorie, you protected us. But yeah, but one person today. And when they give you that feedback, no defending. When they give you the feedback, no, no kind of like, well, actually, you know, you did that before me, or, you know, I'm not really like that, you misunderstood. It may even be that what they said is wrong. But we want you to consider... Is, it, is there still something I can gain from that? Is there still something that I can learn? Or, if it's wrong, why, how, why am I coming across this way to this particular person? What can I do to make sure that I'm not coming across in the way that's giving a misunderstanding? Okay, but one person today, yeah, 
at some point today that, that knows you and you're going to reach out and, and ask that feedback and explain why you're asking and what you're, what you're intending to do. And whatever they share with you, just say thank you. And even if you want to say I, um, thank you, I'll take it away and, and you know, think about it or meditate on it, that's fine. But this is something that we can practice. Yeah, Marge wants to. Sure. So, in the. So, in the six loving exchanges, it talks about um, revealing one's mind and inquiring confidentially. Linking back to what we said in the class about <laughs> us knowing where we're weak, we can get some help with that. I think we mentioned this yesterday that. We've often seen in our own spiritual life that by inquiring, so much help comes. I mean, so much help. I, I've received so much help just by asking questions. And then what you hear from the devotees, like Marge said, often Krishna's there giving some inspiration for them to tell us something. There's, um, especially if you keep getting the same message again and again, that's definitely something to consider. Yeah, yeah. I saw your guru do this. Yes. And, you know, it fell apart because the devotees didn't want to do it. Oh, and then the truth. Okay. That was in a class in Chicago. Ah. But he, he phrased it differently. He uh -huh. said, ask somebody, what's wrong with me? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that kind of like kind of Yeah, to show you that. Yeah, that's why I'm put. I'm saying that's why I'm thinking more of a positive. Like, what, what do you, you know? Any feedback on what I can improve on? Because I think if I ask, what, if I think if the bullies ask what's wrong, they may people be reluctant to be honest to say yeah. <laughs> yes, but try your best. See what happens. See what happens. I mean, yeah, definitely. It, some people may not tell you. It's a good point. If some people, if you, if you find that someone doesn't want to share anything with you, go s ask someone else. Ask someone else, but try and get something. Try and get something from someone who knows you. And, you know, they can say it nicely and so on, but with a sincere desire, I want to know where there's an opportunity for me to improve in my Krishna consciousness. Yeah? Okay. I know I've gone, I've gone over time, so forgive me. Okay. Shiva Prabhupada, Ki Jai, Janitai Gaur Pramanandi, Shishik Shastikam, Ki Jai, Hare Krishna.